Voilà, alors on va, on va commencer cette rencontre assez exceptionnelle avec euh, un monument de la science-fiction et de l'histoire de la science-fiction, M. Larry Niven, euh, qui est avec nous euh, aujourd'hui. On, on a une heure hein, ensemble, on va essayer de balayer un petit peu euh, sa carrière et, et les différents aspects euh, de son œuvre. Et puis on, évidemment, on fera pas mal de, de petites questions-réponses. Euh, on va notamment parler de son cycle de la monde on va euh, notamment parler de « La paille dans l'œil de Dieu ». Vous verrez, on a un petit diaporama de ces couvertures françaises et euh, anglaises et américaines. Donc euh, voilà, ça va nous permettre euh, d'animer un petit peu tout ça. Et puis on parlera également d'une nouvelle qui vient d'être rééditée dans l'anthologie des Utopiales. Utopial 2010, que vous pouvez notamment trouver euh, à la librairie. Monsieur Larry Niven, <rire> je voulais commencer un petit peu par le début. Euh, tout à l'heure, vous me disiez que euh, vous avez commencé à lire la science-fiction à 10 ans. Euh, quels livres vous lisiez et quels sont les livres qui vous ont vraiment marqué à cette époque-là Mars onions. Uh, it, this could have turned me off from the beginning. It didn't. Uh, second was a, a stack of books, including uh, Robert Heinlein's story uh, of, of a trip, trip to the moon in, in which he, he found Nazis already in place. Uh, rocket ship Galileo. That could have turned me off, but it was too well written. Uh, by the time I got to uh, Red Planet, again, Heinlein, uh, I was hooked. Et est-ce qu'il y a d'autres titres qui vous ont marqué vous, vous vous souvenez un petit peu de ce qui vous a plu dans ces romans Of course, the sense of adventure, the sense of discovery, uh, the ideas turned on their heads uh, as well as new ideas straight out of uh, nothing. The scale of things. Uh, Arthur Clarke had a wonderful sense of scale. Uh, even in his short stories, I remember one in which a, uh, a dictator winds up, uh, has himself frozen in effect. Uh, hoping to wake uh, a few hundred years in the future, or a few dozen, uh, the, the cutoff switch uh, gets blocked and he winds up tens of thousands of years in the future when the last of humanity is, is, is in, well, has died out. Uh, he, uh, let's see, there, there, was a, there was the space voyage section of uh, of a story in which the earth is denied space. Uh, again, I, again, we're talking Arthur Clarke, and I'm not retrieving the title, but uh, at one point the main character who, uh, who leaves earth finds himself walking out onto a balcony and confronting a gigantic eye. He has to imagine the size of a whale that used that eye. Yes, I remember the, the stories of my youth better than I remember my youth. Uh, I was fascinated by the sense of scale, the uh, sense of story uh, pulled in by the characters. Uh, characters who were not, all, not always entirely human, who were sometimes aliens entirely. Uh, by the time I reached Hal Clement, uh, It was certain I would be a lifelong science fiction writer, re reader. I didn't start writing until I was 25. Alors justement, qu'est-ce qui vous a poussé à écrire, à commencer à écrire lorsque vous approchiez les 25 ans I had thought I would be a mathematician. I graduated from Washburn University in, in Topeka, Kansas, 
with a bachelor's degree in mathematics and a minor in psychology. I went on to graduate school at US UCLA and found that all the dummies had flunked out and I was at the bottom. Uh, at, the, at about the same time, my daydreaming, which had gone on all along, my daydreaming started turning up full story-shaped daydreams. So I tried writing them down. And then I joined a correspondence school for writers and kept on trying to write. And uh, eventually sold a short story for $25. Uh, that was it. I was, I was not prepared to turn back. Votre première nouvelle a été publiée en 1964. C'était The Cold Place. Est-ce que vous vous en souvenez? That was a short story, The Coldest Place. And I remember it very well. It was obsolete before it was printed. The Coldest Place assumed that Mercury turns one face to the sun, as we believed at the time, and that Mercury has no atmosphere because, of course, it's too late to keep one. Turns out there's an atmosphere of hydrogen derived from the solar wind. Sure, it evaporates, but it's also, there's also a steady stream of protons. And Mercury turns one and a half times per year. So the coldest place was obsolete before it was published, but I'd already cashed the check. Et quel était un peu le contexte à l'époque C'était facile de vendre des nouvelles à ce moment-là Et à partir de quel moment vous êtes passé au roman The uh, short stories in those days were easy to sell. There were lots of magazines. Even so, it took me over a year, but that's common enough. Uh, as for novels, I had written a, a, a novella, about 36,000 words. Uh, I sold that to Frederick Pohl, as I had sold two stories already. Fred bought the, the, book, the novella got Jack gone to illustrate illustrations on the inside, a dozen of my aliens from, from the story. And he ran the story down to Ballantine Books and suggested to Betty, to Betty Ballantine that this could be a novel. So that, that was my first novel, an extended short story. Uh, pretty jumpy, not very well integrated. Uh, but still fiery with imagination. D'accord. Est-ce euh, que euh, on, on pourrait parler donc, de, de l'anneau monde On va faire une, une, un petit passage dans le temps jusqu'en 1970. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de, de l'idée qui vous a amené à, à cet anneau monde Yes, the the idea was a Dyson sphere at the beginning. You know, you know how a Dyson sphere works? Because this is, this is sort of a fascinating way of looking at the universe. Uh, Dyson suggested that a successful industrial civilization is eventually going to need all of the output from its star <coughs> for industry and for uh, habit habit habitability. Eventually, we block out all of the light from, from our sun if we're a successful civilization. And uh, we do it with habitats. Dyson didn't picture the, the uh, origin, the, Dyson pic pictured habitats pressurized in their billions circling a sun, growing gradually denser until no light gets through. Uh, no light gets through, but they've got to radiate. And you wind up with a, an object that is putting out as much energy as a star, but in deep infrared at about the temperature of warm water, if they're like us. You could find that. You could find that on the sky uh, with, a, with a, an infrared telescope. We don't have to wait for aliens to want to talk to us. We can look for them. They'll be obvious. And they would.